Mr. Transformers 96 here with another uh, video where I'm going to be kind of showing you like a tutorial or, or a kind of just my, my process type of video um, where I'm just kind of talking about a work in progress Transformer custom and uh, kind of telling you guys my process. I'll paint a little bit on camera I think and uh, yeah just, just give you kind of a behind the scenes look at how I make one of these customs. Um, I'm doing this because I've received many requests uh, just about every time I post a Transformers custom video I get several people asking me to do this and you know I just kind of not known quite how to do it um, so I'm gonna give it a go I don't quite know how this is gonna go hopefully it's entertaining though and uh, at the very least hopefully you uh, fully understand kind of my process as to how I uh, go about customizing a Transformers figure so as you can see my next one or not quite my next one but uh, one that's coming down the line will be a leader class Megatron custom um, I've been debating doing this for a long time uh, because I have um, customized all of the other last night December Decepticons. I've got an entire team, and uh, and even Berserker actually. Um, so uh, so I've I've just miss uh, I've only been missing uh, Megatron, and uh, I've been worried about painting him because I'd have to do the leader so that he'd be in scale, and that's a really big figure to do a customize uh, to customize, and uh, and you know it's an expensive one to do it on too. But I finally decided I'm going to be much happier with it if I customize it rather than just leaving it. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, Megatron is my next, and then at the very end of this video, I will be giving you a sneak peek at the actual the the next custom that will um, that I'll make a video for before. For this guy because there's one that I'm just just so close on being finished on so uh, let's get started so just my process in in general first of all it's, I start with you know I get an idea of I want to make this character then I start looking for um, ideas uh, not so much on this guy because this guy is mainly just a repaint I'm not adding anything on him I'm not cutting any of the parts or, or doing anything like that however on a figure like um, Onslaught on the, at the left there um, I, I kind of go how am I going to do this you know I, I start looking at other Transformer figures um, usually if I know that I need like a specific gun or a specific um, uh, like uh, like necklace piece or his claw things like that I um I usually get an idea of like, ooh, I, I know a figure that has something similar to that, and I'll go and look at that figure and see how it is. If I really don't have an idea, like nothing really um, comes into my mind at all, which is rare, but sometimes that happens, um, then I'll kind of pull out a bin of Transformers that I have that I just don't have on display, um, because mainly they're, they're concept series ones or, or things like that, and I'll just kind of open it and look around to see if there's anything that kind of fits the need that I would uh, I would have. This happened with Day Trader. I opened that bin, just kind of looked around it like well if I was gonna do a day trader you know how what what body would I use because I really didn't think I'd find anything that I'd like and I found mindset and I was like you know what I think I can make that work so just things like that I just kind of look around and get an, get ideas as to uh, what uh, pieces would work on the figure. Um, now, obviously, I didn't do that with this Megatron because he is a pure repaint. Um, but he did uh, he did have some parts that I took off, which I'll talk about. But then my next step would be just looking at photos. Uh, so I'll you know Google uh, the character, um, get close up images of him. You know, try to get high definition images. Uh, look at every form of, uh, of of examples that I can find. Uh, find clips on uh, on YouTube of him in the in the film. Things like that, just to kind of get an idea of exactly what color I want him to be. Um, then I'll start taking uh, parts off. Um, so on this Megatron figure, I did remove some parts. Uh, first of all, his gun arm is ridiculous. It's way too big. It, it, it looks awful, especially compared to the Voyager one. Um, th this leader Megatron is so much worse than the, than the Voyager one. It's crazy. But anyway, uh, he has these like massive cone pieces on either side there. I unscrewed this. There's just a screw right there. And then there's two screws right here, so I just unscrewed this, was able to remove those two pieces, and then just screw it all back together, um, which does leave a little bit of a gap. I don't know how or what I'm going to do with that. It, it's not like that obtrusive or anything, um, but it is there, so I might put something in to kind of fix it. However, I do like the fact that with the gap, you can collapse this, and then when you collapse it, of course, there is no gap. So I kind of, I like that function, so I, I might just kind of keep it that way, because it really doesn't look very bad, but it is something to note. Um, 
I, I want to do that to make the gut a little bit more streamlined. I also wanted to take some back panels off. Uh, and I just went with the items that are removable and can be put back on. So he has two like massive wings here that, that just are on these clips. I just popped those suckers off. He's got two like little fins here. I just popped those off as well. Um, all of this is just to kind of more streamline the figure. Also to reduce the weight, um, I found that on his, his left thigh, um, this hinge is not as strong as it should be. It's really quite annoying. So anything that can reduce the weight on this guy is going to make him uh, much, much better for um, uh, much better just in general so it can be more stable so not only does removing those parts make it look better it also makes it more stable and um, I know that everybody uh, always wants to know if the item is still transformable um, with those pieces gone he won't be transformable however they're all pieces that can be put back on so if I ever did want to transform him I could physically transform him um, but I don't transform my customs anyway so uh, so you know I don't really have a need to uh, to leave those parts on However, I do find that sometimes, uh, uh, like, I'm, I'm, I'm tempted to leave things on. Like, I would like to cut some of this stuff off because it can't be just removed easily. However, because I know that you guys like me to keep these uh, with the possibility of transforming them, even though I don't, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to still just leave them on for now at least. All right. And then, then once I uh, once I remove all that and I'm ready to go, I kind of get an idea of what I want to do color-wise. Sometimes I don't know exactly what I'm going to do going in. Um, this is very much the case for Shockwave. Didn't quite know how that was going to go down. Um, Galvatron in the back there. I went through multiple iterations because I painted something that didn't look great. I tried a different shade and, you know, it, it, it still didn't look good or, uh, or it looked all right. But then a couple days later, I kind of came up with a new idea or found a new image that inspired me and, uh, and was able to change it because of that. With this Megatron, on. He is very much just silver in this movie. He's a bright silver, like completely. Um, the only uh, parts that aren't are, uh, of course, the red mark on his face, and then he has some gold details. So that's what I'm gonna do. You know, I don't, I don't 100 know how I'm gonna do this, but my idea is to paint this entire thing silver. However, I'm gonna leave the backpack. Uh, unpainted and I'm going to leave the gold parts unpainted and then once everything is silver I'm going to take a look at it and then decide what to do because I'm thinking that if I leave this piece kind of black it'll it'll make it look like he's got more of that hourglass figure which you know is helps with his bulk so I kind of like that um, it, to to kind of focus the eye on, on the the specific parts that are, are necessary for the um, outline and not the kibble um, however it might look strange if he's all silver and then his backpack is like this gray so I might end up uh, painting this, but I'm going to do it last simply so I can see how it looks um, without it painted because I think that that could look good. Uh, and then I'm going to, I'm going to once I paint it all silver, then I'll go over, well, what's gold? Um, so I'll paint the things that are gold and then the things that are gold that shouldn't be, then I'll paint over with silver. And then once all that's done, I'm going to take a look at it and say, should I add any sort of like black kind of wash to it? Um, is I don't want it to look very dirty, but to have it have a little bit more dimension, maybe a little bit of scuffed up look, um, might be nice. So then I'll maybe uh, I'll maybe try it on like an arm, see how it looks. If it doesn't look good, I'll paint it back to silver. If it looks good, I'll do it for the rest of them. So that's basically how I do it. Um, like I've got a plan. However, I don't 100% know which of these will look good, and therefore you know I, I don't know which of these I'll I'll, sh or, um, I'll end up with. However, I do have an idea of how to do it basically. And then once I've got all of that into consideration, then I'll r remove the parts um, just to kind of break down the figure so that it's kind of easier to paint. Sometimes I don't do this, like with Optimus Prime, particularly my earlier customs, I really didn't do this for. Um, but nowadays I do kind of kind of break them down, take off pieces that are easy to, um, to be removed. Uh, like you, usually all Transformers, their thighs and biceps are on little swivel joints that can just be sl uh, slid out. Um, so that's what I did here. I just removed all of his, uh, his arms and his legs, of course. So then with all that breaking down, I, uh, I start painting. So uh, let me give you a bit of a, a look at how I would paint this guy. All right, so of course I'm going to get what I plan to paint. I'll get the paint that I'm going to use. Um, in this case, I'm going to use this Craftsmart metallic uh, paint that's silver. Um, I don't always use Craftsmart. I used to. When I first started, I only used them. However, I found other brands that just have more um, variety in color, and therefore I use them a lot more nowadays. However, I still use Craftsmart for the silver. I do like their silver a lot, and it works pretty nicely. Um, so I'll, I'll just get a piece of paper like this where I can uh, not only have this item so it's not like scratching on... Um, uh, on the desk or anything like that, but also so that 
I can put the paint on. So just, just do like little globs here and there, depending on how much I plan to put on. Um, so I'm just going to start painting this, this little section right here, just because it's, I need this entire thing to be silver. So I'm going to start with that. Um, now because I'm going to do this, I need this entire thing to be silver, and therefore I kind of need a lot on at, at a time, and I don't, I'm not like painting up against a different color, so I don't need it to be, uh, very, I don't need to be careful basically. Um, so in that case, you know, I kind of, I work with two brushes essentially. Now the brushes change, however, the idea of the brushes don't. Um, so I have one that's a little more straight that I really work with, um, for the fine details if I have to paint just something small, or I'm painting up against colors that aren't the same. Uh, so I have to be delicate, you know, then I'll use the fine kind of uh, brush that's a lot better with that. But with this, I'm just painting this entire thing silver. No need to be um, careful or anything like that. So I can use this brush, which is a little more screwed up. At one time, this was my um, my uh, my detail painting brush, but now it's it's just been screwed up over time. Just uh, the more you paint with it, the, the, the worse it gets as far as being straight or anything. So now it's kind of messed up. So now I use this as my... Uh, as my my just kind of coverage brush, I guess you can call it. So yeah, so I'll just start off, usually just kind of take globs. It, you know, if I'm using this brush, I take globs. If I'm using the other one, I'd go a lot more fine-tune and uh, and and just, just take a little bit. And I'll maybe show you how I do that a bit. But yeah, as you can see, just kind of put the globs on and kind of, uh, you know, disperse them, essentially. And what I'm just trying to do is get coverage. Uh, obviously, the way that I paint on different surfaces and like I said, uh, depending on what I'm trying to paint, like for instance, Berserker, uh, or not Berserker, um, Dreadbot. Uh, I obviously, I started this way when I was doing, well actually because of all of his panels, I didn't really use this type of brush for any of them because I had to paint everything so specifically when I was painting it blue and then when I went over it, then I would use another messed up brush. Um, actually, for for um, for Dreadbot, that type of thing, I would use a brush that's even worse than this, uh, that was like really messed up. That way, I can like get a bit of it. What I would do is I, uh, I get like you know, I get the uh, the brush wet. Then I just kind of wipe it on here, and then I would just kind of go over it a bit. You know, this is actually too much. But yeah, but then I just kind of go over it like this, this type of thing, to give it that type of effect. This is a little more extreme than I actually did on um, Dreadbot. It was it was a little bit more subtle than that, but that that's how I got the rust look basically. Um, so that's what I did to uh, to kind of do that. And that's also what I do if I'm going to go over something with silver. Um, for instance, that onslaught um, that onslaught uh, gun on him that's black, and I, I kind of washed in the silver using that same technique. So yeah, so it's just, you know, it's just different techniques depending on what type of thing you're painting. So anyway, you know, I'm going to paint this entire thing. And as you can see, I put up, you know, a couple little uh, little globs there and it's already gone essentially. And I, I've painted very little. So I do go, do go through quite a bit of paint, um, because especially on my first coat because I'm just trying to maximize coverage. And then I'll go in with more fine detail. And, uh, and you know, again, like I said, I'll probably try out a little bit of a black a wash in the... Um, in some of the uh, the uh, the contours of the lines to really make things uh, make things kind of get a little more dirty and uh, and kind of have him fit in a bit more because otherwise he's going to come out very shiny um, just from what I'm seeing here as you can see the the main body section which I painted mostly uh, yesterday last night he's coming out extremely shiny. So I do on some level actually really like that. And then on another level, I'm like, oh, I don't know how great that's gonna look, you know? Um, especially when he's with the other Decepticons who are all kind of beaten up a bit, uh, or at least some of them are. So yeah, so uh, so there's kind of a, a look at how I paint and with what type of brush. All right, so there you go. That's uh, that's a little tutorial as to kind of how I would go about a Transformers custom. Of course, I do have different kind of levels of customs. I would consider this guy in the same level as my Optus Prime, Galvatron, um, and Shockwave type of custom. Uh, however, uh, oh, and uh, Barricade, like things like that, and Drift. Um, these would all be the same type of customs where I'm mainly just uh, repainting the figure, maybe taking a few things off, but mainly just repainting. And then I kind of do have a separate category of custom like Nitro, Onslaught, Mohawk, uh, Dreadbot, a Day Trader, where I'm going in and replacing things and 
adding new things in, gluing and cutting and things like that. And that's a completely different process. Um, the painting stage isn't, but uh, but the uh, the actual physical getting the mold ready and doing everything like that is completely different. Um, and so maybe on the next time that I'm going to do one of those, I'll make a tutorial for that as well. Also, I uh, there is another type of custom that I actually haven't tried yet, but I do want to get into is actually molding pieces. I did buy epoxy putty and I still have not tried it out. I'm just, I, you know, like I don't really know how to go about doing it. So I'm kind of nervous to start it, but I do want to eventually start to do it because there are some customs that I've put on hold simply because I want to try out the epoxy putty and see if I can use it in that design. Before I go though, do I want to just do as promised. I did mention that I, uh, that I, um, would give you guys a sneak peek at my next custom because there's actually one more that I'm going to be showing before and finishing before I finish this guy. And uh, yeah, let's give it a little sneak peek, a little little in the corner here. We've got Berserker. He is next. Working on him now. Almost completely done. Just need to add one detail and uh, and he'll be finished. So uh, you might see a video tomorrow, maybe. At the latest, though, next week, I will be doing a video of Berserker. So there you go. That's my, that's my little process on my custom. Um, hope you guys enjoy this. I kind of hope that this is what you guys were asking for. Uh, hope that this kind of, uh, uh, you know, satisfied your um, your interest as to how I would go about doing a custom. So there you go. Uh, look forward to that Berserker custom and this Megatron custom. If you have any more requests, of course, I'd love to hear them. And thanks so much for watching.